My name is Kishwani. It's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We've been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to GMAT 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. At the end of the video, if you feel that uh, this was something helpful and that you would like to work with me on a one-to-one -one basis, that you would like to hire me as a tutor, you can reach me at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. Just send me an email and we'll see what we can do. Uh, yesterday we did some data sufficiency problems and today we're going to do some multiple choice problems on page number 64. On page 64. Make sure Make sure the book is in front of you, otherwise you would have trouble following me. On page 64, the very first problem here we have is number 12, and we have some boxes. I'm not going to, as I told you, read the entire problem verbatim to you. You have to read the problem yourself. You must have the book in front of you, as I already said twice. We have squares, 12 squares, and they are labeled as x, 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 y, y, v, v, x, x, y, w, w. It's a very simple, very straightforward problem. We are simply looking for the ratio of, ratio of x or y, x or y, over v or w. So we just have to count how many there are. Well, there are 12 of them all together. As you can see, 2, 4, 6, there are 12 of them. v or w, let's find those. There's a w, there's a w, there's a v, and there's a v. There are 4 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4. So there are 4, either v or w, and since there are 12 all together, there must be 8 x or y. There must be 8 x or y. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 x's and 3 y's. As you can see, that's all. The ratio is 2 to 1. The ratio is 2 to 1. Let's move on. Number 13. Number 13. We are told that the point 0, 02 lies on the line with equation 2x plus ky. 2x plus ky equals 4. So the question simply is, what's the value of k? The question simply is, what's the value of k? Well, since we know that this, po this point lies on this line, which means the coordinates of this, coordinates of this point must satisfy this equation. So if you substitute x coordinate, which is 0, plus the y coordinate, which is 2, it should be, that should be valid. That's all there is. Very simple, very straightforward. Nothing to it. 2k equals 4 because 2 times 0 is 0. 2k equals 4. k must equal 2. You're just too silly. Number 14. Number 14, we are told that we are making a bouquet. using the ratio of using using same ratio that's why using same ratio of white to red tulips. We are told that we have 15 whites 15 white tulips and 85 red tulips. The question is what is the greatest number of bouquets that can be made? Greatest number of bouquets that can be made using these flowers. Well, this is a very roundabout way of asking what is the common factor between these two numbers, 85 and 15? Is there a common factor? 
Of course there is. We can clearly see it. It's very simple. There's not much there. This is the multiple of 5 and this is the multiple of 5. So let's divide top and bottom by 5. If you divide the top by 5, 8 has 1 5. 8 has 1 5. After we take away 5 from the 8, we have a remainder of 3. 3 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 35. And 35 has 7 5s. And 15, of course, has 3 5s. There you go. Which means we can make, since there's a common factor of 5, since there's a common factor of 5, which means the greatest number of bouquets that we can make in this ratio, 17 to 3, in this ratio. They must say something about the ratio inside, maybe I didn't write it down. Well, you, you read it yourself, it's very long, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Is the, the point here is, since 5 is the common factor, the greatest number of bouquets that we can make using the fixed, using the same ratio in every single bouquet. That's the condition. We have to use the same ratio in every single bouquet. And if we were to do that, what is the greatest number of bouquets we can make? The answer is 5, because that's the only common number, co common factor rather. And we're going to make 5 bouquets consisting of 20 flowers each. Each bouquet is going to have 20 flowers. 17 of them are going to be red flowers. 3 of them are going to be white flowers. And that's all. That's all there is. Number 15. Number 15. Number 15, we simply have to find the average of 74, 69, 64, 79, 64, 84, and 77. Okay, so now listen carefully. The question simply is, what is their average? We could do it in a classical way, in a traditional way, in an orthodox way, in a geeky and nerdy way. Or we can create some, or we can adapt some creative approach. If you look at the answer choices, this is number 15. If, if you look at the answer choices, we see 73, right, 73 is right in the middle. Now we do not know if 73 is going to be the average of these three num uh, these five numbers, or however many there are, but 73 would be a good place to start. If we start with 73, we can pretend that the average is 73. If it turns out that that number is too large, we can always look at the two of the lower ones, and if that number is too small, we can look at the two of the higher ones. Who, by, by trying 73, it's either going to work, or if it doesn't work, we will have never, we will, we will have narrowed down our answer choices to two of them, and we'll try one of those. So let's try 73. We're going to pretend that the average is 73. If the average is 73, the easiest, the simplest, the quickest, the most economical way of making sure that the group of numbers have the average, a uh, group of numbers have a given average, in this case 73, is to make every one of them 73. This is 73, this is 73, this is 73. If they're all 73, the average would be 73. Unfortunately, this guy is not 73. This guy is not 73. The first one is got one more dollar than he needs to have. We want everyone to have, think of, the, think, of the, think of this in terms of money if you like. We want everybody to have 74, 73 dollars rather. This guy is one more dollar than, than, he, than he should have. This poor guy is four dollars short. This guy is seven, ten dollars short. 73 rather, 73 would be nine dollars short. Nine dollars short. This guy is nine dollars more than what he, 73 I should keep reminding, that's 70. We are pretending the average is 73. So if it's 79, this guy is six dollars more than he, uh, he should have had. 64 would be nine dollars short. 84, since we, talk, we are, since we are pretending average to be 73, this is this guy's got eleven dollars more than what he should have had, and this guy's got seventy-three. I have to keep reminding, is four dollars more. Are you with me so far? Stay with me in the story. Okay, I'm going to change the color now. Okay. No, you don't have to go in any sequence at all, any particular sequence. There is no, there is no right or wrong sequence. You can go in any sequence you want, as long as you pay attention to your work. And what we want to see is, after we do all the adjustment, after we do all the adjustment, taking away, canceling out what we can, if the, at the end we are left with zero, if there is no money left at the end, after we're given, we're going to give some money to people who are negative, and we're going to take away money from the people who are positive. And after we have done all of that, and at the end, we are left with big fat zero. That means everybody's got seventy-three dollars exactly, which means average is seventy-three. So let's begin. I'm explaining way too much. 
Okay, let, let me see what we can do here. We have a, a again, oh, I see negative 4 and a positive 4. Well, that makes life easier. There's a negative 4 and a positive 4 right here. So those two cancel out. In other words, you take 4 dollars from this guy, give it to this guy. Now they're both happy, they both have 73. This is negative 9, a negative 9. Let's let's this this two positive 11 and negative 9. Let's take care of this one and then we are still left with two dollars from here. Because we take nine dollars from here, give it to him, we still have two dollars left here. Okay, stay with me. Oh, we are done. Actually, we are done. I'm going to change the color one more time. And it turns out that it is zero. So keep your attention. Here is positive six, positive two, that's positive eight, and a positive nine. Positive nine is going to cancel out with this guy right here. This guy cancels out with these three guys right here, these three guys right here. So the, at the end, it is zero, which means that the average is in fact 73. The average is equal to 73. Now this would have gone a hell of a lot faster if I didn't explain in such tedious manner. This is actually a very quick process. If you know what you're doing, it's a very straightforward, simple process. Oh man, I should not have used the green color. It doesn't erase very well. Perhaps I should get rid of it so I don't keep grabbing it. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of it. You don't need it. Next one, number 16. Number 16 says, what is 125% of 5? What is 125% of 5? Well, 125% is same as 100% of 5, which is 5, plus 25% of 5. Isn't it? 5 is 100% five is of 5. 5 is 100% of 5, and we need another 25%. 25% simply means 1 quarter. 1 quarter of 5 is simply 5 fourths. So we're looking for, we're looking for 5 plus a 5 fourths. 5 fourths is one and a quarter, so it's six and a quarter. It is six and a quarter. Okay, let's keep going. Number 17. Number 17 is again a very straightforward simple problem. When, it's, when they're asking about finding out simple average or simple median, the only way you will get it wrong is because you are not paying attention because there is nothing to it. You simply have to pay attention because it is very easy to miss something or for example when I was doing the work for a second I forgot that we were pretending the average to be 73 and not 70. You just have to pay attention, that's all. So here we have to find the median of 34, 29, 27, 46, 18, 25, I do want to fit all of them in one line, 12, 35 and 16. Let's just make sure that I didn't miss anything. 34, 29, 27, 46, 18, 25, 12, 35 and 16. There you go. So the smallest number that I see there, this is the smallest number, 12. After 12 is going to come, we have 16 and 18. 16 is the next one. Then I see 18, 16 and 18. And then we have, then we get again into the 20s. We have 25, 27, 29, those are the three I see there. 25, 27, 29, 25, 27, and 29. 25, 27, and 29. So 20s are all done. Now we have a little bit 30s and 40s. 30 is 34 and 35, 34 and 35, and 46. Now you understand just now, I hope that you realize that uh, uh, we did a little bit more work than we needed to do. This was a bit of a bit of an extra work, a waste of time in the real exam. I probably would not have done it. What, you, what we need to first do is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 9 of them, which means the fifth one is the median. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Once we arrive at this 27, I probably would have written down 29 after that, but the rest is not important. This was, we, we did not really need to figure out the order of these three numbers. It doesn't matter what, they, what the order of those three numbers are. It doesn't matter what those numbers are. As long as you know that they are more than 27. That's it. The median is 27. Median is 27. Number 18. 
number 18. Number 18, we are told that we burned 24 gallons per hour. I don't know what kind of vehicle this guy is using. I don't know. I, I have to read it. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't tell you, but you, whatever you, that you're using here, whatever you're driving, you know that you're burning 24 gallons, 24 gallons every hour. And you're going at 32 miles per hour. 32 miles per hour. Question is, what's the mileage? What's the mileage? Which is same as saying miles per gallon. What's your mileage? Which is same as saying miles per gallon. And miles per gallon means exactly what it says. Miles per gallon. This is what we're looking for. Okay? And if we pay attention, if we pay attention, we should be able to realize here that we have we have miles right here. Miles right here and gallons up there. And this guy's got an hour at the bottom, hour per hour per hour. This guy's got hour at the bottom, this guy's got hour at the bottom. If we divide one from one with the other, the hour is going to drop out. The, the unit of hour is going to drop out. So since we want the miles on the top, let's put down 32, 32 miles per hour. And the bottom we have 24 gallons, 24 gallons again per hour. And if you divide those two quantities, if you divide those two quantities, hour is going to drop out. That's it. That's your answer. Miles per gallon is what we're looking for. All you will do is reduce it. This is the multiple of 8, this is the multiple of 8. Let's divide top and bottom by 8. 32 has 4 8 and 24 has 3 8. The answer is, what's the mileage? The mileage was 4 third, 4 third miles, 4 third miles per gallon. 4 third miles per gallon. Whatever, whatever that answer choice happens to be. I believe it's answer choice D. D is in David. Let's do the next one, number 19. Number 19. We are still on page 64. Number 19. In number 19, we are told that we are going to drive to and from. We are going to drive to and from somewhere. Doesn't matter where. We are going to drive. We are going to drive to all the way to our destination, and only 10% journey back. Not all the way, just 10% of the of the distance back. The question simply is, what percentage of round trip is completed at this point? So we went someplace, we arrived at our destination, we did whatever we had to do, we got back in the car, we started driving back, and as we have just driven 10% of our way back, you asked me, so what percentage of our total journey have we accomplished so far? What percentage of the what percentage of the round trip have we completed so far? That's what I want to find out. Again, instead of doing it in the algebraic way, which you could do obviously, but instead of doing it in the algebraic way, the simplest and the quickest way is to simply make up a number. And the simplest number that comes to my mind, because we are dealing with percentage here. Pretend that the whole trip is 100 miles. If the whole trip is 100 miles, we have driven from A to B 100 miles, and on the way back, we started from B and we are up to here, and we only go on 10 miles because we have driven 10%. So, what percentage of round trip is completed? It's very simple 100 miles this way, 10 miles this way is 110 miles for a total of 200 miles. For a total of 200 miles. Let's divide top and bottom by 10. If we divide top and bottom by 10, it becomes 11 over 20 
11 over 20 and since we're talking about what percentage since we since they're asking us what percentage percentage the word percent the word percent literally means per 100 percent means out of 100 well right now we have 11 out of 20 20 we don't want 20 we want we want we want bottom number to be 100 it's very straightforward multiply top and bottom by 5 so that bottom becomes 100 11 times 5 is 55 55 out of 100 there you go we have completed so far 55 percent of our round trip we have completed 55% of our round trip. If, not, if you just give me one second, I'm curious about something. I'm still here. I want to see something here. We have done 55% 55, 55 of the round trip. I'm going to stop right here. We finished the page. We're going to stop right here. Tomorrow, we'll meet again, of course, and we'll do some, uh, we'll do some uh, data sufficiency problems. Again, if you wish to get hold of me, just send me an email at Keshwani Prep, that's P R E P, Keshwani Prep at iCloud.com, uh, an email, or you can just visit my website, KeshwaniPrep.com, and you can send me an email from there as well. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.